Sam Cedar on the majority report. Emma Viglin is out today. Uh, joining us now, John Samuelson is the uh, international president of the Transport Workers Union. Um, John, welcome to the program. Ah, uh, thanks. Thanks for having me. All right. So, all right. Work this out for me now. You're the. Are you the uh, the president of the International uh, Transport Workers Union or the international president of the Transport Workers Union? And what uh, what what does that mean? Because this is so a big, this is a part actually, of the story right now in terms of what's happening in Boston. Yeah, my title is international president of the Transport Workers Union. We do have you know 104 locals across the country in air, rail, transit, universities, utilities, bike share, we, which we do in Boston as well, um, and anything that moves, we organize. So we. Uh, TW, TW uh, Local 2054 is one of our locals at the commuter rail and MBTA, and we're in this fight with them to win a contract against uh, this creepy Keolis. Okay, yeah. So let's let's get into um, because the, the there's an interesting dynamic here as to what that union needs to be able to uh, sort of like uh, to, to possibly strike. But let's uh, back up a little bit. The MT, uh, MBTA in Boston. Uh, they have um, it, they have like a subway system. It actually goes above ground uh, for a lot of the city into sort of like, I guess, a, tr a trolley, I guess you would call it. And uh, and increasingly a commuter rail. Um, and uh, I know this because it's changed Worcester. As far as I can tell, my hometown, it's grown by like 50,000 people in the past 50 years. Um, and uh, this deals um more specifically with those commuter rail workers. Is that right? Only, only the TW, our local, uh, 2054, only deals with the train mechanics uh, and the coach cleaners on, on the commuter rail. And in fact, on and there's a division only on the south side. And uh, I'm not a Boston guy. We have a local president, an excellent local president named Ed Flaherty, who's leading things for us up there in Boston. I'm from Brooklyn. And... Uh, so I'm, I'm here basically to lend the support of the International Union and throw all of our resources into this fight. There's um, a little over 100 members in 2054 in this fight against Keolis, but it may as well be the 155,000 members of the International because those are the resources that we're bearing down into this fight right now. All right. So tell us, well, first tell us about Keolis because, you know, you would expect... A company that comes from France would get it a little bit more, you would expect, but not so much. Yeah, ironically, they're doing uh, they're doing something in Boston right now, which an American company would never get away with in France. We'd, an American company would get tossed out, and rightfully so. But this French multinational corporation can come to Boston and essentially undercut wages, abuse workers by lack of of a, by lack, for lack of a better expression, underpay workers, um, cut working conditions, cut wages and conditions, and get away with it, and then brag about making a profit. In, in France, they'd get thrown out on their ear. So, and that's what Keolis has done. They've earned a profit in Boston on the commuter rails off the backs of workers. And in fact, they, 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 they're being bankrolled by the American taxpayer and bringing profits back to France with them. And it's, it's an outrage. And when I say that, uh, a coach cleaner... On, at the MBTA, commuter rail, makes um, in the neighborhood of 19 bucks an hour. So they qualify for food stamps. They qualify for Section 8 housing. That's all supplemented by the United States taxpayer. So we're supplementing a profiteering French multinational corporation to come in, earn profits off of the U.S., the backs of the U.S. taxpayer by kind of Walmarting the, um, the MBTA and its workforce and then bringing profits home to France. So it's an outrage. Everybody should be outraged, not only in Boston, but everywhere. So how long, uh, so what has been the status? Are they uh, Have they been had a contract or they've been out of contract for a while? Like how long has this been, this situation been going on in terms of like uh, uh, where we're at now? It's been going on 250 days as of today. So 10 months or so, um, something like that. And so for 250 days, they've been without a contract. And um, what now this this dynamic and you got to explain this to me. They need authorization to almost like separate from the the national uh, TWU 
to take a a labor action. Is that right? No. Oh, no, okay. no, no. All right. No. Now walk me through this because I find it a little bit so confusing. Not at all. So the, the 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 national TWU is a signatory on the contract. So I'm the signatory on the contract. I'm heavily involved in this contract. The the local is the day to day, um, the day to day representer in Boston. But I'm the signatory on the contract. I have the locals back 100. percent this this could the difference here, um, unlike the regular regular transit workers at the MBTA on the T, is that we're under the um, DNMB, the Rail Railway Labor Act, and we ah, have the right. right. Okay. So that that's the difference that we there's a process um, that's guided by the Railway Labor Act that ultimately and hopefully will result result in the TWU uh, being able to take strike action if we can't come to satisfactory terms with Keolis, which is actually controlled by the MT, MBTA. And again, shame on both of them if it gets to that point. But if it does, we're damn sure going to take strike action. Okay. So what? So what? What's the next steps? Do do um, uh, the does the do these workers uh, vote to authorize a strike? Has that already happened, or does that need to happen? Um, and, and and like wh- where are we? At, wh- what are the next steps? Two hundred fifty days out from uh, from a contract. Yeah, so. This, this workforce in Boston is absolutely going to go on strike. If we have to go on strike, there is a, there's bargaining going on. Perhaps there's a glimmer that the bargaining will result in a contract that's satisfactory to the workers. If that happens, of course, it would be our fondest hope that it does happen. That, of course, it'll, it'll end immediately and we will uh, do what we want to do, which is, which is work um, and provide service on the commuter rail. Uh, we we believe that uh, that there is a chance that that could happen, uh, and 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 if it does happen, it's only because of the the uh, the organizing that we're currently doing right now uh, in and around the MBTA, political organizing, organizing workers, uh, organizing them to fight back against Gilles, which is exactly what where this is going to end up in if uh, if we don't get that contract. Where is uh, is Keolis? Do they operate any other uh, commuter rails around the country? This country. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not sure if they operate any other rails in this country, but they have extensive operations internationally and they have an, an abysmal, horrific record. And in fact, I'm, I'm about to embark on a series of meetings with other, um, other workforces internationally that they represent to begin to get a, a better grasp of what they're all about. And all the reports that I'm getting back thus far are that they're an absolutely horrific employer. So we're, we're dealing with an entity that is uh, that has a horrific reputation in terms of representing workers into I'm, I'm sorry, employing workers internationally. And so where are the leverage points? I mean, uh, do you guys um, are you guys um, uh, meeting with officials in Boston? Do they have much control over this? I mean, how much how much authority did they cede to a private company to run something that is a public service? Yeah, so that's kind of the, that kind of kind of the shame of it. They have the MBTA, the Massachusetts DOT, and ultimately ultimately the governor of Massachusetts have total control over this. They they have total they have total control either through um, forthright political pressure or or otherwise. They uh, they don't want to grant the Keolis the contract. They can intervene. They can threaten to take the contract away from Keolis. They can directly intervene. We we expect that that's going to happen. Um, if Keolis does not settle this contract promptly, the MBTA should absolutely not renew that contract. We, we're exploring through the federal government means that the, uh, through the federal government, through political means, uh, a methodology which would prevent the MBTAs of the world, of the United States, not giving contracts to companies like Keolis who do not promptly negotiate contracts, fair contracts with American workers. So there's a, there's a political element to this, which is very much part of uh, the strategic approach we're taking here. Uh, it is quite outrageous. And, and so we are exploring all of, the, all of those avenues alongside the traditional avenue of organizing our members to take direct action through striking the MBTA when we get to that point in, um, through the NMB process. Do um, you know, like it, it, it strikes me that um, if I'm working, you know, if, if I'm on a commuter rail and, and, you know, obviously the mechanics aren't uh, aren't uh, public facing, they don't deal with the customers. But a lot of I would imagine your workers do. 
And uh, commuters, they're taking that trip uh, by definition on a daily basis. They're coming, to, they're going in, they're going back. How much um, uh, are of your efforts function on, uh, are focused on like organizing and getting a support from the users of the rail? So we are going to be, so right now we're, we're on the precipice of beginning a rider organizing campaign. We're going to wait to see what the bargaining is going to produce. We're going to wait to see what the last session produced from Keolis. If we do not get an appropriate response, we're going into a massive intensive organizing campaign with the riders. We work and live alongside the riders in the communities in and around Boston. Uh, that those are the communities that we service. Those are the communities where we live. We fully expect that when the riders of the system understand how despicable Keolis has been in terms of paying conditions oh, since they've gotten here, that the riders will stand with us when and if we have to take strike action against the MBTA and against Keolis. Give me a sense of, um, you know, and I, I you know, I, I get that you're going to be focusing on uh, organizing in, you know, amongst the the riders, organizing in terms of like uh, pressuring uh, both uh, Boston and Massachusetts governments uh, that that deal with this. But um, what, how much in the back of of what you're doing? And I imagine this is a question for you, uh, you know, in, in terms of your work nationally. Um, how much of like the National Labor Relations Board and and their talk, I know there's been some talk anyways, of the idea that like, you know, union recognition has has, has uh, been improving, you know, and certainly the Starbucks thing uh, helped it and, and whatnot. But the time between like a union is recognized or, you know, when there is no contract, when workers are working without a contract, there's been talk about, making it almost definitionally per se if there's x number of days that have gone by without a contract that's an unfair labor practice like how much of that is uh are, are you guys working on trying to promote trying to get in hand because that seems to me to be a pretty powerful weapon uh in in dealing with with management like uh like uh, like this company and for, for example so you referenced the NLRB. We're dealing with the Railway Labor Act and the National oh, right. Mediation Board. So the rules are not the same. The unfair labor practice that you reference, they, they, they don't exist in the same way they exist un, under the NLRB. But everything that you're speaking about, we're addressing those with the Democrats nationally. Uh, we're addressing those in the state of Massachusetts. I think on a broader scale, the Democrats themselves, they really don't have any business if the Democrats are what they want people to believe they are, they have no business um, contracting out public transit or commuter rail. They just don't. Commuter rail is a vital public service. It has no business going to a profiteering multinational company, either an American company or a foreign company. It's a vital public service. It, it goes right along sanitation, policing service, paramedic service. It should be in the hands of government. It should, as it is in most other American cities, there's written Massachusetts, which is controlled by the Democrats. There's no reason at all under the sun for them to be operating a system that is that that's a commuter rail system predicated upon profiteering. It's ridiculous. And it's actually goes against everything the Democrats should be standing for, period. And I think that debate is very much in play right now. We're going through a very similar fight in New York State against a New York State Democratic governor that's where it is um, run under under the public umbrella. But very similar things are occurring, similar demands, attacks on pensions, attacks on wages, uh, right at a moment in time where the Democrats are trying to retake the House of Representatives. It's actually quite outrageous. They're allowing workers um, to be abused simultaneously, telling folks that they're a party of workers. And it's outrageous. Is this, uh, the, is, is, is this exclusively the purview in Massachusetts anyways, the purview of the governor's office? Or is this like... Is, does there have to be a statute that says we're going to allow a Keolis to come in? And has it always been a private entity or, or, or was it uh, uh, was it was the commuter rail uh, public before? So Amtrak ran until 2003. And then there was the um, outrageously um, ridiculous decision, a decision against the public good to hand it over to private operators after 2003. Uh, and there's a, a direct correlation to wages. And, uh, and also 
um, at least over some period of years to the safety of the railroad itself after it went to privateers after 2003. And, uh, and to answer your first part of your question, it's directly under, the, under control of the state of Massachusetts through the Massachusetts DOT and through the MBTA, which is controlled by the DOT. They could end the contract right now, bring it back in under the public umbrella. Um, it, the, the Thatcherization, the Margaret Thatcherization of the uh, commuter rails at the MBTA does not have to continue. And uh, when is their contract up? Do you know? Their contract's up in like two years. All right, interesting. And it should, it should end. There's really no reason for privateer, uh, profiteering companies to be involved in public transportation, public transport in the United States. It doesn't work. And in fact, overseas, in, in England itself, much of it, is, it has been turned around. It's in the process of being turned around because they just don't go together. The pursuit of profit and public transportation, they just, they're at odds with each other. Either you're providing a public service or you're pursuing profit. They don't go together. They, they go right against each other. 100%. And it's a, uh, the, the, you know, these decisions need to be made based upon what's going to help these communities again and not put money in their pockets. I just wonder, like, I'm curious because, you know, we've had in Massachusetts, I say we, I used to, I used to, I grew up in, Bo in Worcester, um, for much of this century um, and, and going back until like, you know, uh, to probably Bill Weld, we've had almost exclusive Republican governors. And I wonder how much of, of, you know, this is an opportunity now that we have a Democratic uh, a, a governor um, in the uh, um, in, in Massachusetts to like apply those principles, like you say, uh, should be um, second nature for Democrats, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, absolutely. I think when the Democrats do things like embrace Republican concepts like privatization of public transit, which is an absolute bona fide public good. When the Democrats behave like Republicans, why would working people vote for the Democrats when they could just vote for the real thing, Republicans? And I think, you know, that has been a phenomenon. Yep. When working people see Democrats, neoliberal Democrats, behave like Republicans, they, they vote for Republicans. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, John Samuelson, um, really appreciate it. So what's the next, like, what's the next thing we should look for? Like, it, it's really just a question of like this round of, of negotiations. And then if that, if, if that doesn't work and if the Keolis uh, continues to, to shortchange these workers, um, you guys start to mobilize a lot more. Yeah. We're waiting on a response right now from the employer. If the employer delivers a substandard response, you're going to see the TWU international alongside our local we're going to we're going to start organizing the workforce. Um, we're going to continue to organize the workforce. We're going to begin aggressively organizing within the community, within the riders, and we're going to pursue full speed ahead the, the legal um, process toward full blown strike action against the MBTA. And we're going to hold the Democrats accountable. What uh, what can uh, our listeners do uh, to support you guys? Well, I think there's going to I think as as time goes on, as part, part of this over the next several weeks, there will be reach out from the TWU in and around Boston uh, about elements of support that the community can reach out and uh, and let Keolis and the MBTA and perhaps the uh, the state of Massachusetts and the political operation of Massachusetts. Let them know how dissatisfied they are that Keolis is screwing the workforce on the commuter rails at the MBTA. John Samuelson, International President of the Transport Workers Union. Thanks so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. All right. Thanks for having me. Thanks.